So <clears throat> welcome everybody. Um, <clears throat> here we are, it's Thursday, I can't believe it. Um, and um, just as we're getting started, I wanna make sure your fingers are warmed up. Um, and as I've been doing other mornings, um, warm up your fingers by entering into chat your favorite tech hack or tool. Like what do you use all the time that you just love? Um, this is selfish, of course. I, I'm curious to know <laughs> what you all like. Um, I'm always looking for a good tool, but um, if you have something you'd love to share or like I just learned recently this wonderful thing you can do with Google Docs, which is that if you change the part at the very bottom where it says edit to say preview, you have this very attractive document that looks almost like a PDF, um, but it's clickable and stuff and not editable. And um, and that's what we've been using to display a lot of things on our uh, Kiko chat site. Um, so it's a neat little trick that um, you can try out. <clears throat> so, um, Nobody's putting anything in chat. Oh, the internet. Oh yeah, thank you, Dave. <laughs> thank you for putting some things in there, everybody. Trello, yes, I love Trello. I'm glad, I hope you're still using that, Nancy. <laughs> so, all right, so uh, welcome to our Thursday plenary. Um, if you haven't been to one before today, I'm Catherine Lawrence and I'm with the Science Gateways Community Institute. Uh, we're gonna, talk about something very immediate, right, for just a moment. So first, um, in Zoom, I just want to mention, so if you look at the bottom of your screen in your Zoom window, and I'm going to, just a second, let's see here, I'm going to share my screen for just a moment. Um, <clears throat> so um, if you look at the, um, you'll see a little uh, button that looks like this reaction button here that I'm showing you. And um, so I'm, I'm using this for a show of hands. So um, the, um, what I want you to do is answer the following question, which is, uh, and you can be honest, I totally will not take it personally. Um, so a show of hands with whatever symbol you wanna use, um, how many people found the Kiko chat conference interface, at least somewhat confusing when you first joined. <clears throat> I am just curious to know because I have had the same experience. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> yep. Okay. Not as many as I thought though. Okay. Well, that's promising. Or maybe you're just shy. All righty. So, um, you know, I did, and I and I tried to make it easier than the default interface. But there's only so much that I could do, and and I mentioned this um, because that's why today's plenary session is so important. I've been really looking forward to this session with Paul and Hiram because I think you're going to get a lot of useful approaches and concepts that you can apply to your gateway, and they're not uh, hard at all to comprehend. So um, just a little bit about um, Paul and. Uh, Hiram. Paul Parsons is an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Graphics Technology at, at Purdue. He and his team of student interns provide usability evaluations of science gateways through, uh, through the co consulting services that, um, that SGCI offers. And he also um, teaches the basics of usability in the Focus Week program. And I'll just put an add in a shameless plug right now. Um, the next focus week is going to be virtual, just as this conference is, spread over two weeks, and you can attend for free if you register by November 23rd. It will start on November 30th. So I'll just mention that. And then Hiram uh, Kirkendall is MicroAssist's chief technology officer, where he promotes accessible technologies and techniques, and he helps others create experiences. Um, as he puts it, that can be perceived, navigated, and enjoyed by everyone, including those with disabilities. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Paul, who is uh, going to get this session started. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. All right. Thanks, Catherine. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here. I think I can speak on behalf of Hiram and say that we're really happy to be here with you all and, and hopefully share um, some tips for you that you can use on, on your own gateways. So let's get started. First up, we're going to have um, a couple of polls. Um, so I think our, our wonderful IT helpers are going to get the poll started here. The first one is a question. Are usability and accessibility the same thing? 
We'll give you a minute and then we'll see what the results are here. We got 90% responders. You want to just maybe end it? Sure. Sure, yeah. And I'm not allowed to vote. I so didn't vote. Like even I vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 90% say no. Uh, I, I think everyone can see this, right? I assume 90% say no, 2% say yes, 8% say unsure. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll see if people's opinions change um, by the end of the presentation. Okay, so that's our first poll. Um, second one is my team knows how to make our gateway usable and accessible currently. Yes, no, or unsure. Hi, Paul. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm Roma, and I don't know where I just, just joined two, three minutes late. So the uh, I wish there's an answer, something like up to certain extent, because yes or no is. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, phooey, we didn't include that as an option. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we de we deliberately constrain the options. It's it's uh, not a perfect system. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We got to make it more usable. Darn. <laughs> yeah. You could do all yes right. and no. <laughs> we, yeah, we could. I mean, all, ideally, we'd have a short answer session. We'd interview everybody, but you know. There we go. Answer. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got yes, thirty three percent. That's not that's not bad. That's higher than I expected. No, forty three percent, and unsure thirty percent. Okay, good. And so, we'll, we'll, maybe those numbers will, will the, the positives will creep up a little bit after this session. All right. So um, first off. And advance this slide. So I want I want to um, just spend a, about a minute and um, talk a little bit about usability. I think most people have a sense of what usability is, but often when I ask this question, um, people aren't really sure what kind of words they can they can put to this this idea to describe it. Um, and sometimes we're talking about uh, first time users and how, dif how how difficult it is for them. Sometimes we're talking about expert users. Sometimes we're talking about errors and and so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you five dimensions of usability here that that can help you um, think a little bit more specifically about what aspects of usability you're interested in for your um, gateway. And um, so I'm gonna talk about the usability um, stuff, and then Hiram is gonna follow with some accessibility uh, uh, advice on top of that. So. Here, here are the, the five dimensions, and I'll give you a very brief definition for each one. Um, and so the first one is learnability, and this is how, how easy it is for someone to accomplish basic tasks for the first time. So this is for novice users. We often talk about a learning curve. That's, that's what this refers to. The second is efficiency. So how quickly, once people know how to use the system, how quickly can they, can they perform their tasks? Memorability, uh, once people uh, know how to use the system and, and they don't use it for a while, how easily can they reestablish proficiency with it? Um, errors, uh, so do people make errors? How often, how many, how serious are they? And can they recover from them? And then satisfaction, so do, do people like it? Is it pleasant, um, you know, please, pleasing to use the system? So these are five dimensions. These are not the only ones, there are many others. Uh, but these are common and um, they, they can help you think a little bit more specifically about what usability means for you. So a little brief background on where this work is coming from that I'm um, presenting um, and the paper that goes along with this presentation, you can see a, a 
clip of it here. Uh, so uh, as Catherine mentioned, I've been working with um, SGCI along with my students doing consulting engagements. I think I see many of you here that we've uh, worked with in the past. Uh, and so we've done more than 30 of these, these engagements assessing usability of, of people's gateways. And for each of these, we, we do some evaluations and we generate a report um, essentially. And so what we did for this paper, we went back, looked through our reports and said, what are a, a small number of the most common issues that we see that we also believe people can solve on their own? Um, and so that's why that question was asked initially about, about being, being able to solve these things on your own. And so what we do is we identify three of these and propose some very simple um, solutions that we believe anybody can implement. And these, these will make a big um, difference in improving the, the usability of your gateway. And um, so we do, we do that and then add on the accessibility piece. And that's where, that's where Hiram comes in. And so the, the paper didn't have accessibility, but we're, we're doing that here in the presentation. So in the paper, um, we talk about three of these most common issues. And the first one is that users don't know where to look. When they come to a gateway, they're confused about where to look. The second one is that users are overwhelmed by the amount of text that's on the, on the gateway. And the third one is that users are, they feel lost in the, in the system. Um, and the third one's crossed out because we're, we're not gonna cover it here for the sake of time, but it's, it's in the paper if, if you're interested in learning about that. And I'm gonna give a couple examples of these, these first two. Um, some of you may have seen this application before. This is called Google Wave. Um, it doesn't exist anymore. And I'm showing it because I think it's, an, it's a good example of what not to do. Um, here, I think there are probably numerous reasons why the software uh, failed, but one of them might be that it's confusing. When you first encounter it, you're not sure what the most important part of the interface is and where you're supposed to look. Um, and so I'm gonna give you a couple really simple tips and I'm gonna show you an example of a gateway that I think um, does this well. And, and so what you really want to do is, is ensure a, what we call a visual hierarchy. And this refers to um, the way that you design elements on the page that guide users' attention to them in a specific order. And so you can use things like size of, of text, of, of various elements on the screen, color, um, alignment, contrast, um, and, and others to draw people's attention to those things and the order in which they see them. And, and so here's an example of a gateway. Uh, this is NanoHub. Some of you may be familiar with this. And I think one thing that they do well here is um, you can see their main header is uh, the text is large, uh, it's bolded, and it's very likely that that's what people are going to look at first. And so that's the key message that they want the users to get. It's succinct, it's quick, and that's what they're gonna see first. Um, second, potentially second or, or near the top of this hierarchy are these, these squares that are down below. And so here we're using uh, sh a different shape and containment. There's some contrast with the background color um, and, that, and, and also the size. And so that's gonna draw people's attention there as well. Um, then you'll notice that there's um, some sub uh, headings and, and the navigation bar at the top, um, which are smaller uh, in, in size. And even though the nav bar at the top is, um, is higher uh, on the page, people are likely not gonna look at that first and they're not gonna expect that that's the most prominent thing. And so there's a feeling when people come here that they, they're not overwhelmed and they, they know where to look. And so these are, these are very simple things that, uh, that um, you can do to help draw people's attention and build that visual hierarchy. The second one is that users are overwhelmed by text. Um, and so there's a tendency, I think, um, especially with people who are, who are scientists or researchers, we're used to writing a lot and reading a lot. And we want to put a lot of text uh, on the page to really tell people everything, all the great stuff that we've done. Um, and so for those of you that were in the uh, plenary, uh, a couple of days ago, there was a similar message about communicating your science and, and not, not being too detailed. 
I mean, I think that's a similar thing here is that people don't come to your page generally to, to expect to read a lot of text. If they want to do that, they'll read a paper or, or a book. Um, and the, the very simple solution here is to make your text scannable. So don't expect people to, to read linearly from top to bottom. Allow them to scan the page and pick and choose which pieces of it they want to read. And uh, numerous studies show that there's this sort of ironic situation where when you put less text on a page, people spend more time reading it. Um, and that's, that's, a very, that's a very clear um, pattern that we see. Uh, and so here, I'm going to show you an example of, um, this is NCI Hub here. And very, you know, very, again, very simple, um, but they use a few nice techniques here. And so they, they if you remember visual hierarchy from, from a couple slides ago, this is also helping to make the text scannable. So they're using um, this top level header, it's, it's large, um, and then they've got sort of a second level header here um, that helps guide people's attention first off. Um, second, the, there are meaningful headings, and so people can scan the page just by looking at the headings. And if they're meaningful to them, then they can decide on where they want to spend their time reading, and they'll, and they'll likely spend more time. Um, using bulleted lists rather than paragraphs um, is, is, is very important, and so here people can choose which bullets they want to read. And you'll also notice that the text is fairly concise. Um, and so I'm sure each of those bullet points could have been a paragraph on, on its own, but it's not, and people will, will read that quickly and they'll, they'll get the information that they, that they need. Um, okay, so I'm gonna turn uh, it over to Hiram now. <laughs> uh, all right, I've been, I've been stifling a cough here for like two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm sharing on my screen, everybody's using it, so I can't do anything without messing up the presentation. So I am going to, uh, to m try to make the case that usability and accessibility are the same thing. It's just a matter of uh, perspective. Um, and so uh, accessibility is all about providing equivalent experience regardless of ability. And so when we talk about things, the learnability, efficiency, memorability, error, satisfaction, scannable, what I hope to do is I'm going to take you through um, using assistive technologies and a variety of, of things. And I'm going to show you how somebody with a disability is going to want to have access to the exact same thing. So if you code for accessibility, we'll be achieving the same thing. So in the chat window, I'm gonna drop in, um, in the chat window, which I closed and is now disappeared. And I have no idea where it is. Well, isn't that weird? Oh, it must be behind the uh, presentation. <laughs> All right, our first, uh, our, oh, here it is. Okay, our first little weird thing of the day. So there we go. There's three things that I'll be, I'll be using as I go through here. So uh, I'm going to use a much simpler uh, page than, uh, than the gateway just to, to do my demonstration points. So the first thing that Paul said was, hey, we wanna be able to draw people's attention to areas and make this easy to understand, right? So, I, you know, I, as a sighted person, I come in here, I say, oh, this is a banner section. Okay, this is a main section, and this is a footer section. And then within here, I can see that, oh, you know, this is the main topic of the page. It's bigger, it's bold, it's in the middle. This is George Washington crosses the Delaware, and oh, I have dates and I have resources. So, there are there are four there are four primary areas for accessibility. There's vision, mobility, cognitive, and hearing. I'm going to just focus on vision, and I'm going to focus on one time. I'm going to show you somebody who is who is reliant on assistive technology. Technology. They're either blind or they have low vision, and how they would go through this page, and how it's going to be the same as a sighted person would do if you create your gateway in an accessible manner. So. Okay. I have started a screen reader. A screen reader is a piece of software that literally reads the screen to me, but it does more than that. Normally, the first thing I do is I listen to the whole page, but I'm going to be a little quicker because we have time constraints. So we said, okay, um, I perceive there's a banner, there's a main section, and there's a footer. And I can also see over to the right-hand side that there's this navigation section. So if we use proper coding techniques, in this case, something called landmarks, I, as a uh, assistive technology Elements list user, dialogue. can come in Tribute and I can say landmarks rate 
how is this page laid out? And look, I have the exact same information as an assistive technology user as a sighted user has. So comparing Element. it, I can see there's a banner, there's a navigation section, Content. there's a main section, and there's a footer. So just as a sighted user would now go, well, I'm really interested in the main section, I set my visual focus there. Using a screen reader, Tree view. I can do the exact Banner same thing. Banner expanded one of three, level zero. I can say, okay, Mr. Screen Reader. Level, level zero, main two of three. Move my point of focus to that main section. Main landmark George Washington crosses the Delaware heading level one oil. So I have moved my focus now and I can read down from there. And, I, and that's because I'm using, because I'm taking the time to follow the HTML5 standard and I'm coding it properly. Now, the other thing that, uh, that Paul said is, you know, um, we want to be able to very quickly parse through the content, right? So we want to look down here and I see there's George Washington across the Delaware. I see there's dates. I see there's resources. I, as a visual person, can very easily scan this text and find the information. So how would we handle that as, a, as an assistive technology user? I have the ability to pull information Elements list dialog. out of the Type. page and Grouping. look at it individually. Headings radio button. So if I come in here and I look at headings, notice that I get the exact same information you do. So if you've used headings, and in this case, you, you made George Washington a heading level one and dates to heading level two and resources a heading level two because they're, they're subtopics of George Washington, I can pull these out and I can look at them. And if I want to set my focus, I can Form move to oops, headings, can radio, move tree view, level one dates. To dates, let's say I want to go two. to dates, and I press enter. Dates, heading level two. And now I have set my focus there, just as quickly as you, as a sighted user. If I, uh, if you ever see somebody that has used their screen readers their whole life, they can process a correctly coded page as quickly as a sighted user can. Now Paul said, you know. Um, for making text scannable, you know, do things like use bulleted lists. Well, that's a brilliant uh, thing, all right? So how does that, how would I, as somebody that is a screen reader user, how am I going to know that I'm on a bulleted list? So my focus is all right, beloved. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to move down onto it. I want you to hear what a person using assistive technology would hear. List with three items, bullet December 25th, 1776 prepares troops. Bullet December 26, 1776 troops ready with supplies. Bullet December 26, 1776 George Washington and troops cross the Delaware River. So what happened was, I don't, it's, it was hard to hear. You kind of have to get used to listening to a screen reader. It said, hey, there's a list here. And this list has three items. So I, as a, as a person relying on assistive technology, just got the exact same experience that you did. Um, so, and, and then, you know, just to, you know, kind of also bring out, um, you know, we're talking about quickly scanning, uh, scanning text, right? So right now we're just talking about vision, but if you have nice human readable links, um, I, as an assistive technology user, can get the same thing that you're doing. And I know I'm running out of time, I'm trying to hurry. So, if I Elements come in here, I can dialogue. say what links Type are in this links page. radio button check look, alt plus k. Every link on the page has been pulled out. So that George, let me stop my screen here because I need to flip back note, over because I realize I'm NV, running out NVD, of time. Okay. So if we were to look at a page that doesn't have these uh, abilities, um, I'm going to show you some testing tools real quick. Um, there are no landmarks. I can't. I won't be able to to digest this page. Um, the headings are not headings, they're just graphics. Um, my lists would just be lists, I wouldn't read it. So one of the, uh, um, so one of the hallmarks of accessibility is giving the exact same experience. And in this case, on this page, which doesn't have any of these features, um, I'm not gonna have the same efficiency. It's gonna be harder for me to memorize and understand where the content is. My satisfaction is gonna be much lower. Um, my text is not scannable. In short, if I don't uh, have those things that I need, I'm gonna leave. Now, it's not just, now screen readers just one type of accessibility. 
Um, another one that's equally important is keyboard accessibility. So if I have a mobility impairment and I am, I, I'm going to access your site, I'm going to be reliant on just the keyboard. And the best way to test is just simply tab through the document. Do I have good focus indication? Do I know where I am in the document? If I don't have that when I come in here and do the same thing, you don't know where I am in this page and I don't know where I am in this page, right? So, um, you know, if you define usability as, you know, one in four people in the US has a disability. So if you define usability as making 75% of the people happy and excluding a quarter of the people, um, that's not what uh, gateways are about. That's not what the, this conference is about, right? It's about, it's about inclusion. So to get back to um, our slides, and so that is just a small sampling. I am doing another presentation, a learning lab, um, at four o'clock Eastern time, three o'clock Central. Um, and I will do a deep dive into testing and then we're really gonna go into the, uh, the technical aspects of this. So um, the last thing that I wanna bring up, you're, you're saying Hiram, that's, that's kind of confusing. It looks like there's some things I'm responsible for there and some things that I'm not responsible for there. And I, I completely agree with you. If you're a gateway software designer, then there's technical understandings that it's technical considerations, right? You have to understand the web content accessibility guidelines, uh, which are, are guidelines on how to make things accessible. They will be the yardstick to which you are measured. There is HTML5, there is ARIA, we'll go deeper in those in the, in the breakout section. There's uh, testing methodologies. Um, what we were doing was what we call manual testing, actually going in with the same assistive technology that a screen reader user would use and, and using the site. And there's automated tools. So there are things that we can do. So in our, our next session, we're gonna show you tools. Um, this is Wave, it's a very simple tool, but we'll go in and be able to catch things that are syntactically incorrect. Um, so that is if you're a gateway designer. Now, if you're a gateway author, uh, a person who is just putting content into a system, it's a little bit easier. Your, your gateway designer has put things in there to help you. If you just use the native tools like bullets, uh, you know, bullets, uh, numbered lists, underlines, if, uh, and even uh, superscript, subscript, uh, screen readers understand all that. So if you just use the tools as presented to you, that's going to go a long way towards making an accessible experience. Likewise, when you are in your content and you're breaking it up into the various sections, use the heading feature in there. Frequently I come in and people have put in 30 pages of text and they bold and increase the font of the, of the section headings. That doesn't do me any good. I can't, uh, a screen reader user can't jump between something that doesn't exist, right? And just changing the coloring of it doesn't allow me to do that. Uh, and then look for the accessibility feature. So this is a little tricky. So if I have a picture, you know, what's the one thing we always start with in accessibility? If you have a picture, what do you need to do? I need to put alternate text on it, right? Sometimes they don't call it alternate text. So for example, in the learning management system we use, you'll put in your picture and it says, describe this image for somebody who can't see it. Okay, that's, that's probably better than enter the alternate text, which not our alt text that not everybody knows. Um, and you type it in there, or there will be a box that says description, not nexus if necessary. What that's doing behind the scenes is that's putting in the correct code. So I, as a person who has a gap in ability, that's what a disability is, I have a gap in ability, can use assistive technology. That's a tool that comes in to fill that, um, that gap in ability. And I can have an equal experience. And you will have created something that is far more inclusive and will make it more usable for uh, people that have that have challenges. So actually, I, I think guys that I've come up, I talked a little fast. <laughs> so uh, Catherine, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you your your two minutes early. Yeah, I was gonna say that's not very accessible to talk fast. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Uh, but that's okay. We'll have more time for questions anyway, too. So, um, 
So uh, what we're going to do now, because there's, you've just had to digest a lot of information, um, and I want you to have some time to contemplate it, because that's how we learn. Sorry, these are my keep my hands warm gloves. <laughs> I was forgetting that you were noticing this. So anyway, um, so yeah, think about these three questions. What surprised you? Are accessibility and usability still the same thing to you? Or does it seem like um, they're still different, or are they say same or different? And number three, based on what you just learned, how might you create inclusive experiences with your gateways? So um, we're gonna give you a minute to think about that. We'll put on some nice uh, thinking, quiet thinking music. And, um, and then in a minute, we'll um, bother you again. All right, so with that, let's, um, what we're gonna do to get, so this is part of an active learning cycle, I'll have you know, that, uh, that if giving some time to discuss this and think about it is really important to absorption. So um, we're gonna put you in breakouts for about seven minutes so you can um, debrief your answers to these questions and explore them. And then after that, we'll bring you back um, uh, to talk about what you've discussed, any questions that came up while you were talking, and um, uh, just generally um, see what questions that you might have for Hiram and Paul. So um, when you're, so in a moment, you're gonna see a button asking if you'd like to join the breakout. Uh, there's a blue button, just click, and we'll automatically uh, bring you back after about seven minutes. see here. So uh, now we have everyone back. Um, and <clears throat> what I wanted to find out, so we had some folks who stayed here, uh, just so you know, if you're, if you're just joining back again, um, we had some folks stay in this room and not go breakout because there was nobody in the breakout with them. <laughs> and then other people are working. So um, at the same time, listening like you would to NPR, I guess. <laughs> so, um, uh, so what um, I'd like to do just, um, for a few moments and then open up for questions for Paul and Hiram uh, is to hear from some of you. You can so you can either type into chat something that you discuss, whether it may, whether it's the things that surprised you, uh, whether you disagreed about whether usability and and accessibility are the same thing. Um, maybe how you're going to be adding this to your team's toolkit. So you can put that in chat, or um, or just speak up because we're I mean we're a big group, but we're not that big. So um, and and you can also um, put in chat, if you like, questions that you have for Paul and Hiram, and I'll pass them along. So who thinks usability and accessibility is the, is, are, not the, are not the same thing? I'd love to hear from somebody on that. Well, uh, I'll speak up. I, I don't think they're the same thing. Um, I think accessibility is a subset of usability. It's basically usability for people with a gap in ability, as, as you call it. Um, so I think they're not exactly the same. It one describes people with certain abilities mm -hmm. um, and usability is kind of a general term. So I think it's a subset. So, you know, it's interesting. So when I look at this screen, when, when I design a website, um, I think about the usability aspects. I go, okay, this is how I want my learner to, or my user to go through there. I think about the navigational design plan, right? So because I do so much accessibility, I actually create a navigational design plan uh, for a screen reader user. I think, how are they gonna get through, how are they gonna get through this? Because I, you know, so not only do I want my, my sighted user to come in, and have an easily digestible experience. But I also come in and I think, okay, how do I want my, my, uh, my, my, my assistive technology user to come in and do the same thing? So it's actually, it's when, you, when you get down to the questions that you ask to make a usable experience for somebody that has a, a disability, it's actually the same thing. And you're doing them whether you realize it or not. So I made the conscious decision of when I came in here that I wanted these, you know, that I wanted these types of uh, of highlights of these type of focus indication. Now you probably came in here and said, you know, so if you're not really in the accessibility world, you came in here and you go, I think that looks nice, or you know what, I don't want it. I can't tell you how many places I've been to that come in and they take away focus indication. 
because they didn't like it. Um, or, you know, with these links, you know, I have them underlined because it makes it easier for it to call out. I can't tell you how many sites I've been to that will have links that do not have any underline. So if let's say that I'm low vision, one in 12 men um, has a color deficiency. So if I come in here and I was to, to simulate um, the various uh, types of, uh, of vision deficiency, you can see that things appear and disappear. So, you know, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes, I think, when you have such a big lift, you're trying to make this gateway or you're trying to make whatever, and you're trying to help the most people that, you know, that you can. Um, it's hard to think, okay, now we want this to be inclusive as possible. So what about a person with a mobility impairment? How, how's my focus indication? How about somebody that has color deficiency? How is my color contrast? You know, um, people who um, are blind um, don't particularly go into the sciences field because all the material is so inaccessible, um, it's hard for them to to enter this field. But that's a that's a self-replicating problem, right? I don't go into the field because the materials are not perceivable and usable and I don't enjoy going there. Um, and then you don't make your materials accessible because you don't have anybody that has a perceivable disability. And so it just winds up becoming this this rotating rotating issue. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking up. I mean, that is that is absolutely fantastic. I think this was the best part of the presentation. <laughs> well, and now there's some interesting comments in um, in the chat, which I'll read out to everyone, um, particularly because this is being recorded for later, folks. Um, uh, one uh, John pointed out, if my site is is not accessible and it is, then it is automatically not usable for that proportion of the population. Um, and someone else said, um, if your site is usable, it should be accessible. If it's not accessible, it's not usable for all audiences. But and then so, um, uh, Lee pointed out, I think it's possible to make a terribly organized site, even though it's perfectly accessible to a screen reader or someone with mobility issues. For example, you can make a bad site that is still accessible. Uh, so, um, you know, it depends on what you mean by accessible. This site, uh, this site here is horrendous. So these are not headings. These are not bulleted lists. Um, it is accessible in the sense that I have a screen reader. I can start reading from the top and I can go to the bottom. But it's, uh, you know, um, I have another site that, you know, I remove everything in here and it's just text on a page. And most people, when they look at it, go, that's hideous. I cannot, I, I don't enjoy using this site. Give me headings. Give me bulleted lists. Make this thing where I enjoy using it. Ironically enough, when you do that and you follow the standards, you have given a person that is reliant on assistive technologies. And there's more assistive technologies than just a screen reader. There's screen magnifiers that do the same thing, that can pull things out of context. Um, there's, uh, you know, uh, there's voice activation. So, uh, you know, a, so a person who's sighted may have trouble in the, in the sciences. But somebody with a mobility impairment doesn't. So if I use my dragon naturally speaking, I can literally talk to it. I can say, all right, I want you to read me the bullet list, or I want you to fill out this field. I can actually speak to it, but only if you've coded it to the standards. And when you, I hope you come back for my uh, presentation, my breakout section, session. Learning lab. Be mm -hmm. Learning lab, um, because that is, <clears throat> that's where we're really going to dig into this. And I'm going to, we'll talk about the technology behind it. Now, a question came in, which I think um, is worth asking while we're thinking about it. Um, can screen readers read Zoom chat? You know? Zoom like if chat. you have, oh, like oh, the, the chat, chat that's, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to navigate around, but Zoom is one of the few um, presentation packages that are accessible. So I've got a friend who mind, uh, mind who I do a lot of work with. We use them all the time. He's, he's blind. Um, and blind is a legal definition, 2200 and worst eye, blah, 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 breast eye, blah, blah, blah. Um, some blind people have partial sight, um, but he is fully blind. And I could turn on my screener and I can use Zoom and use all the features and get to chat. That's cool. That's yeah, really neat to is. know. Yeah. And by um, the way, that is the reason Zoom has taken off. Um, so schools, uh, universities, can, you have laws that are like vices. 
Section 504, if you took $1 of federal money, and that doesn't mean you took it for your program, did the student go get a, a loan, you know, a student loan, and enter your class, you're covered under 504. 504 is unforgiving. If you took $1, everything you make is supposed to be accessible. So we try not to do that because that's kind of a carrot and stick thing. I'll tell you, your obligation to the university is you have to make things accessible. But I'd rather show you that um, if you follow good coding practices, if you follow HTML5 and WayARIA and the WCAG, then you'll, you'll be there. I'd rather carrot you than stick you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, Jack pointed out that many web uh, graphical user interfaces are just front ends to command line. And so for some, the command line would be more accessible. Um, I guess the problem would be you'd have to know how to do command line programming. But, yeah. um, but that's yeah. a really interesting point because so many gateways are, were, came about in order to make that command line programming knowledge not necessary. Yeah, Paul, Paul. Do you do you have any experience in the in the gateways that you've helped with? Um, like, are are they to, have they been many of them been ones that are helping to bypass that part of the process? You know. Um, yeah, maybe 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 um, a, a fifth of the ones that we've worked with. Mm -hmm. I don't know, roughly speaking, that's definitely that's definitely part of it. Um, you know, and it, I think it's a good. Uh, a good point. It's all about the user and and what they need, right? So for when we talk about usability, one aspect is efficiency. And for many people, a command line go. is more efficient than a than a GUI, right? And so mm -hmm. if that's the the element of use usability that we're concerned with, um, you know, sometimes people think usability means a GUI is better than a command line. That's that's not true. It just happens to be more more usable for mo most people. Um, and so, yeah, many of the gateways, or at least some portion of them, are, are trying to build a front end to make it more uh, accessible to a broader population who, who is not going to sit down and use the command line. There, there is this concept of equivalent facilitation in, in higher ed, where you just have to provide one means of access. Um, but, you know, so here's my challenge, my challenge to you on this. First of all, if, you, if it's uh, a science application that you can run through the command line and you can get to the same thing that you do through the GUI. I have no, I have no problem with that, but like the gateways themselves, I, as far as I know, don't have a, a command line equivalent. So, so that one would be hard, but there is this concept of universal design. We don't like to make two of something um, just because like there was in the old days, we'd say, we'll make a website that's accessible and make one for everybody else. And the accessible one's very plain. And then the other one, you can make you do whatever you want. And that's really frowned upon now because you can't ever keep the code in sync. There's a lot of, so I would encourage you to, to do one, one interface and, and, and make it, make it accessible. Um, I'm looking to see there, if there's any other questions coming in so far, there aren't, but if anyone wants to speak up with a question too, we're, you're totally welcome to do that. Well, in the in the afternoon show, I'm going to show you tools that will that will help you on this. So, like the whole landmarks thing. Whoops, let me get on a page with landmarks. There are all kinds of tools that will help you um, help you come in here and and look at these things and uh, create a good. Oh, I think I'm uh, Catherine. I think I'm fighting you for control. Sorry, hang on, sorry. Hang on one second. Yeah. No, it's okay. I'll just. Forth turn off yeah. like, <laughs> like oh my mouse is <laughs> my mouse has disappeared <laughs> off the edge of the, uh, off the off the edge of the screen so Oops. um but there are there are there are all kinds of tools that can come in here and help you um understand your the accessibility of your of your website you don't you don't always have to come in and test with a screen reader but you do know how to, need to know how to come in here and what uh, a a person would be um, expecting, and one of the now, uh, Hiram, I have a yes, question. Can you could you show the slide, the very last slide, which I know has your contact info? So if if oh, some yes, folks can't, absolutely. that would be great. Just absolutely. just in case people can't come this afternoon. There it is. Yeah, so that is just in case you need to find these folks. I would love to hear from I, I, I you know obviously Paul and me and Catherine everybody on this in this on this call is passionate about something right. And so, uh, you know, what, what I'm passionate about is trying to um, eliminate as many barriers as I can to independent living, hiring and career advancement. 
if you ever want to boil, if you if you ever want to boil accessibility down to the three the three things, um, independence, hiring, and career advancement are the three hallmarks. So in your in your classes with your students and and other faculty, you want as few barriers as possible. You want people to do independent. You know, everything can't be. Well, I bought this package. It's not accessible. Call ODS or whatever your office of disability services is. They'll handle it. You know, um, that's a, a rough, a rough way to go. And there's a, a wonderful speech which, luckily, you have lucked out. There's not time for, where you know we talk about um, procurement. And one of the things we'll definitely be talking about in the session on the 11th with uh, gateways, um, you know, is that. Um, you know, uh, gateways are kind of an open source software package. And so um, it's been very easy for you to enter universities. You don't go through a, a purchasing path. So there's not a watchdog making sure your materials are accessible. And universities are, are now really getting so many Office of Civil Rights complaints that they're really starting to, to clamp down on those. So, um, you know, times, times are changing. Just like Zoom has, you know, just like uh, COVID has now made it to where we are all online. I, I never, I didn't think universities were going to be able to get to this place for another 10 years. And, you know, universities stepped up and did it in a matter of months, you know. Um, uh, th you know, the next big thing is, you know, we don't want barriers for students on in any of the classes, and they shouldn't have to ask for accommodations. That's kind of where the direction where people are trying to go. Um, so I'm, a, we have just a minute left. So I want to make sure that, um, uh, People, uh, so obviously people know how to find you by email. Um, I just want to mention also, Paul, if people have questions about the consulting services, I assume they can reach out to you, what that would involve, or they can just email our help at Science Gateway's email address. Um, sure, did you have anything, one, yeah. any last things that you wanted to say, Paul? Um, make your gateways usable. No, I don't know. I <laughs> <laughs> and I, and my, I counter, a 10 I second it is accessible, you know, make yeah. them usable and accessible. That's the, that's the takeaway message. And you, <laughs> you can, you can do, you can do it on your own. At least these, these, these small things. <laughs> that's the whole message. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to mention uh, that, you know, that in addition to those services and I mean, High Room's business is, is all about the accessibility, as you know, um, um, you can, um, as he mentioned, there's a learning lab today at 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, the, the also we um, will be having a webinar in November, November 11th. These the webinars are recorded, but if you want to join live, um, Hiram, that's partly why I decided to ask him to do this. Is um, thinking, you know, that would be a nice ac accompaniment to Paul's usability paper. Um, so he, uh, November 11th, there we will have a free um, webinar for, through Science Gateways Community Institute. Those resources are located uh, in the, um, I'm just going to share real quick, in this um, document that's in Kiko Chat. Um, I have put links to getting to the learning lab. Um, I'll point out that at the top of this screen, there is a list, uh, some tabs with the usability paper, the accessibility checklist, um, and then also um, you can learn more about uh, usability as part of the virtual focus week that's coming up, uh, coming from November 30th to December 20, 10th, and you have to apply for that. It's free, but you have to register by November 23rd. Um, so with that, I would like to thank all of you for joining us today, for being engaged in this conversation. It's really fun when there's um, uh, conversation and debate going on. And I especially want to thank Paul and Hiram for making this topic so accessible. It's easy to understand. <laughs> so um, look for Thanks, the recording everyone. of this later on, along with the slides. So you'll be able to revisit if you like. So thank thanks, you so everyone. Much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's been very helpful. Thanks.